Hi guys, Jonathan here from Farmer's Friend. In this video, we're gonna show you how to assemble a pyro weeder. There's a couple tools you'll need. First of all, a 7 16 wrench or socket, and second, a 15 16 wrench socket or an adjustable wrench if you don't have that size. We're gonna start with step one. You're gonna take the long bar and the short bar and attach them to the handlebar. One thing I'll mention is the bags are separated by hardware size. So the bag that, that has fewer items in is 3 8 hardware, and the larger bag is all your quarter inch hardware. We've included a little pouch of anti-seize because one thing that's difficult with stainless steel hardware is you can run into an issue called thread galling. So you can just put a little bit of this anti-seize on the threads of your screws as you assemble them. These inch and a half carriage bolts come through from the inside. On the outside, you'll use one of these oversized washers and you'll slide it over the bolt and then use a quarter inch nut on the back side. So then you'll just do the same thing on the angled longer tube. Now we're gonna tighten up the nuts using the 7 16 wrench. So if you just take your hand and kind of hold the tube flush with the face of this um, handlebar tab, it will be a little more in line. You do want to be careful not to tighten these too tight because this is a fairly thin wall aluminum tube. In step two, we're going to take the straight lower tie and the angled lower tie and attach it to the upper handle assembly to complete the handle. The straight lower tie attaches to the inside of the short bar. Again, just hold the ties flush with the tube. The angled lower tie gets attached to the angled handle tube the shorter part attaches to the inside of the handle tube. Now for step three, we're gonna attach the handlebar to the toolbar. We're gonna to position the toolbar with the lower handle ties on the inside of the handle mounting tabs on the toolbar. You're gonna to use the quarter 20 by one inch carriage bolts and you'll start by putting the carriage bolt through the very bottom hole and you'll put one of the regular size quarter inch washers and then this is where the nylon lock nut goes. You don't want to tighten it up all the way because this joint here we actually want to pivot. So you just want to get it snug. We'll just do the same on the other side. Now we'll take a quarter 20 by one inch carriage bolt and run it through the upper hole and through the slot. It's not important to use the anti-seize on this one because the knobs have a brass insert, which will not have the thread galling issues. Now we'll just do the same on the other side. Now let's do step four, which will complete the tool cart. You'll start by taking your 15 16 wrench or adjustable wrench and removing the lock nuts on the ends of your toolbar and one of the large washers. Now we'll take one wheel, lift up the toolbar, and slide the wheel on, and then do the same on the other side. You'll now take the washer and lock nut and put it back on the axle. And this one you don't want to get too tight or you'll put extra strain on the bearings, but you just want to get it snug. If you tighten this excessively, it will affect the rotation of the wheel. In step five, we're gonna attach the burner ties to the tank brace. You'll be using the quarter 20 by one inch carriage bolts, put a little anti-seize, and then on the inside, you'll take one of the regular quarter inch washers and again, a nylon lock nut. You don't wanna tighten it up excessively because this is a pivoting point for the burner height adjustment. We'll now take another quarter 20 by one inch. The carriage bolt goes from the inside, and then you put the washer and the knob on. And now we'll flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. Make sure as you tighten these that your burner ties can still pivot. Boom. Tank brace assembly complete. In step six, we're gonna attach the burner assembly to the tank brace assembly. The tabs on the manifold will go on the inside of the burner ties. And you'll take your last two quarter 20 by one inch carriage bolts, put them through from the outside of the burner ties through the tab on the manifold, and then you'll put a quarter inch washer over the inside. You'll use your last two regular quarter inch nuts for this assembly. And then you can put these up at an angle position like this and 
tighten them up. In step seven, we're gonna attach the flame weeder implement to the tool cart. You'll now need to open your bag with the 3 8 hardware. Take the 3 8 carriage bolt and slide it through and lock it into the square socket in the tank brace and then slide it through the corresponding hole on the tool bar. You'll then take one of the 3 8 washers and a knob and once you have the first one snug, the second one will go a lot easier. And once again, there's no need to put anti-seize on these because the inserts for the knobs are brass and you won't have the issue with thread galling. In step eight, we're gonna attach the valve assembly to the handle. Bring the valve assembly up close to where it attaches to the handle and make sure that your hoses are as untwisted as possible. And then you just slide the carriage bolts through from the inside and then you'll take the large quarter inch washer and one of the quarter inch knobs, tighten it up from the outside. For our final step, we're gonna attach the propane tank and the regulator. You can just rest your propane tank right here in the tank brace. You wanna be careful that this doesn't tip over, so it's good to keep a hand on it while you attach your bungees. Final step is attaching the regulator to the tank. You can just do this by hand. You don't need to use any tools. You'll damage the connector if you do. You can now take the included hook and loop strap and attach the hoses to the handle tube. You have now completed the assembly of your farmer's friend Pyro Weeder. Be sure to follow all the safety instructions in the manual and happy weeding. <laughs>